to carry on. So, so in terms of how we look physically, I mean, we, I mean uh, and, and how we actually look, and, and what's going on internally, um, and our environment, and how behaviour, and how how positive we are that day, all has an impact on our productivity, because life is a series of choices. Now, you make a choice, you you make a bad choice one day, and and we are we, we are balancing on a knife edge sometimes. You make a bad choice one day that could impact the rest of your life. That's a choice based on how you were that particular day. How it, and, and, it'll have an, and it'll also have an impact on how you were at school, how people responded to you at school. Mm-hmm. And you can carry that. So someone who was young, who was probably considered quite stupid, but who was highly intelligent, but we just didn't know, but they didn't know how to actually reach them because they didn't know some of the science that they do know then, could actually have gone down a, a life believing that they were stupid and making decisions based on a lack of confidence. So their identity was lack yeah. of confidence and feeling right. stupid. Because one thing you were talking about the other day, you can only earn as much as your self-concept. If you don't, you know, your self-worth. You can only earn the same amount as your self-worth. If you don't, if you, if you only think you're worth 50,000 a year, that's all you'll ever earn. So people fulfill their own prophecies. They don't get what they deserve. They get what they think they deserve. Which is why psychopaths become CEOs, because they think they deserve to be superior to other people. They have a sense of superiority. So one of the definitions of a psychopath is a sense of superiority and a lack of care for others. So therefore, they're not going to be group people. They're going to naturally be leaders or rejects. Yeah. I mean, look, we've covered this before because some so psychopaths have brought down some very big companies in the past because they don't care about the other people other than themselves. What generally happens is people get disengaged or the workers get disengaged and then they stop performing and then the company starts crumbling. So in, in some ways, some businesses, it probably is good to actually have a woman at the helm because they are le- you're likely to find there are less psychopaths amongst women than there are amongst men men which means you've got a better chance of not employing a psychopath because he and, and this is to do with the halo effect well don't well, forget the woman well, who makes it to being ceo is more likely to be even more disagreeable than the average male psychopath uh, ceo yeah yeah it doesn't so really make you a psychopath so but statistically they're more likely to be in fact a more much more dangerous one but that's because people like that are more aggressive they are more, you, you, you know, you use the word disagreeable, which comes from the big five personality um, traits, um, more disagreeable. But the thing is, they are far more, and, and because of that, they're more, more competitive. See, the personality... But the thing is, and hold I on t- a second. And the, and the reason why there's not as many women in top jobs as there are as men is because men are highly, highly competitive. They carry more testosterone. They may, they're more aggressive when they approach things, um, and which is why they find themselves in that position. Because for them, hierarchy is more important because, based on evolution, hierarchy determined how many females you mated with whereas hierarchy is less important for females because females on the whole have a fairly average number of children yeah therefore they don't care naturally about hierarchy as much clearly there are exceptions but the, these are the broad brush strokes and therefore forcing women into hierarchies actually stresses them and makes them unhappy which is why more women are trying to commit suicide than men at the moment it, because it's an interesting because we're in, in this new whole new age of women empowerment and um, I was thinking about that but it's not women empowerment it's actually women disempowerment well I was think I was thinking about that because this is all you know it's all about women empowerment and things like that but this is this is what the this is what um, social justice is looking to to, to push forward look and that's fine look if a woman wants to if a woman wants to if a woman wants to go for a top job you can't you, you know I, I, I've got no disputing that if she's willing to make those sacrifices and of course same like any man but it, it should come down to ability and of course we, we, we just started off by saying there's the most important strength is in identity and if women are being told oh you're all the same as men guess what their feminine identity is being taken away. They're being made fundamentally weaker by the people who are professing to be making them stronger. Yeah, and you know, and you know what? Uh, I, and I could be totally wrong here, but uh, a lot of these very vocal feminists do not actually possess a lot of, or, or, or in my experience, 
do not possess a lot of very feminine characteristics. They're not particularly attractive. Um, they're usually overweight. You know, they paint their hair. I mean, I'm, 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 it's a very generalistic... You mean they haven't been successful as females? They, they, they haven't <laughs> been... Su- actually, that's probably a very good point. They haven't been very successful playing in a feminine role. And the thing is... so, but, And then you've got these women who or some of the women who are very attractive and I and, and by no means and hold on a second and, and by no and by no means do I I, I want to categorise pretty women as stupid because I'm not because there's very many very attractive women in, in higher in higher rank positions and actually attractive women do get higher positions I mean you look at some of these newscasters on television you know not too pretty so they don't look so they're not perceived as unintelligent but uh, uh, attractive for the camera with that level of intelligence and it's about finding that balance because there's a certain profile that actually fits on to be a newscaster um, so you know and of course uh, that will vary yeah. amongst countries but, 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 won't yeah, it yeah absolutely uh, of course in the very different countries I mean I mean every look different countries like different body shapes I mean in, the, in Japan they like the very petite small framed woman whereas in somewhere like Brazil they like their pear shaped very curvy type women which you, which you see in the, you know on the beach over there so so yeah so each culture each country has a very different perception on, on how they look and he's totally thrown me where I was going to go with this. Um, into um, I, I, no, I was, no, no. So there's so, so there's some women who 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 who've got their assets of being highly attractive, and they they've learned that from a young age. They know the results that it's got them, and they like to be they like to sexualize their their beauty, and that's fine. If that's their choice, because the, f- the and, female and that, is nature, uh, yeah, and, and that's their and that's their choice. Just as just as much as a choice as it is for a woman to go for a CEO's job, it's just as much of a choice for an attractive woman who wants to use her sexual who wants to use her sexual assets to go. Uh, look, that's what Marilyn Monroe did. It's what many of the most of some of the most attractive actresses did, um, and you know some of these. Was so, so so when I saw this whole Formula One thing about the pit girls and the walk-on girls on the darts, you know, and, and they ended, the, you know, you literally ended their careers. You have to make, if you see, if you stop that, you have to stop anything, sexualizing anything. Yeah. So female models, male models, you know, all that would have to go. So you're right. I mean, it, it you can't just pick and choose because at the end of the day, it becomes a hypocrisy. Absolutely. So we've all got, we've all got different assets. We've all got different capabilities. We all have different things going on inside that we can't all see, um, and you know if it's if it's if it's discovered early enough, there's a lot there's a lot of potential there. Now, as I said, I didn't discover mine until very late on in life. Now, I spent the first four years writing a book that I never finished, and within three months, probably four months of actually taking Ritalin on a, on an irregular basis, I actually was actually managed to, I actually managed to finish it because I was able to focus on it. So when I look back on how could I potentially done that. That uh, when I was at school, some some of the results could have been very different, and then my choices in life could have been very different. Not that I'm complaining about that by any chance, because you know one thing I did do is I did go back and I did go back and do it, but I, I had to persevere, and it resented me a lot about my father actually, because for my father, intelligence came very very easy. He was highly intelligent, and it came to him very easily. So so when I had to put in half the uh, twice, well three times the workload. So you never lived up to your father is what you said is what you mean no not at all actually you got when well, that totally wrong that's okay yeah I, I don't, I, it's, no, it's not it's not com- it's not where i want so to go he, there no no it's not it's not that i resented my father for that it, I'll st- hold on a second <laughs>